In this video, we're going to take a look at what a neural network is and how you get data in and out of it. Now I say neural network, but this same technique works for other machine learning constructs such as support vector machines, which is another machine learning algorithm that I use commonly for this sort of thing. Data is presented to these machine learning constructs as input and output. So you have an input layer and an output layer in both a neural network and a support vector machine. So let's take a look at what this would actually look at, look like. I am going to draw the input layer here. The input layer, at least for a neural network, is sort of a series of input neurons. These input neurons, I'm just going to draw them as circles. So this neural network has two input neurons. I'm going to label them I1 and I2 for input neuron 1 and input neuron 2. Now, neural networks, as well as other machine learning structures, also produce output. This output can be thought of as an output layer. That's the terminology commonly used for neural networks. The output layer, I'm going to represent here as an output neuron, and I'm going to label that as output 1. This is a very simple neural network. It has two input neurons and one output neuron. These are connected in some ways. There is basically something that goes on in the middle that I am going to represent here that is abstract. What exactly goes on in the middle is determined by the type of neural network support vector machine, or other learning construct that you have. This could be a artificial neural network, could be a support vector machine, or it could be some other sort of machine learning construct that is designed to accept data in this way. Now, not all machine learning constructs accept data in this way, but this is the model that we are going to use for these introductory class sessions on neural networks. Now the input and the output, you may be wondering what format this is actually in. These are basically numbers, floating point numbers in particular. These numbers, at least for neural networks and support vector machines, are almost always in the range of negative 1 to 1 or 0 to 1. So those are the ranges that you present data to the neural network as. You usually want to pick one or the other, and you'll want to do the one that makes the most sense. Now this is a lot of data because obviously between negative 1 and 1, as well as 0 and 1, there's an infinite number of decimal data that can be there. So we'll look at the data that we're going to send into this neural network. For this neural network, we're going to basically give it two numbers for the input neurons, and we're going to expect one number from the output. Now you may be wondering what these numbers are going to actually be, and this is an important part of neural network programming, is learning how to take real world problems and represent them as the numbers coming into the neural network, because fundamentally that's all you have. You are giving the neural network a series of numbers going in, and it's going to give you some numbers going out. And that's really all there is. How you associate meaning to this is something that I am going to cover in a number of video presentations. For now, we're going to look at a very simple case. We're going to look at a operator, the XOR operator. The exclusive R, this is very often used as the hello world for neural networks. Now we're going to get into a lot more complex of things in the future, but we're going to look at XOR. XOR works like this. Say, for example, you have 0 XOR, 0, that is going to equal 0. This is a simple operator. It has two operands coming in, and it produces one number. 0, XOR 0, is 0. So we would put 
two num we would put the two operands, the zero, and the other zero in as the two input neurons. And we would hope that the neural network would give us back another zero. Now the whole truth table for the XOR operator, the exclusive OR, is relatively simple. You can also use an AND and an OR, but the XOR is a little bit harder for the neural network to learn because it's not linearly separable. We'll see that later. But the XOR, basically if the two operands are the same, it's going to be 0. If the two operands are different, Oops, I did that wrong. I want a 1-1 um, a one, one there. Just make that a 1. That's going to be, again, 0 because they are the, they're the same. So that's the truth table. So basically, the training data, and training data is very important for a neural network or a support vector machine as well, the training data would be represented coming in as 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And you're going to provide the neural network with the expected output, which is going to be 0, 1, 1, or 0, depending on which of these uh, data you're sending it. The term that we use in neural networks to represent these two is this is the input, and this is the output. Or, in this case, this is the ideal output. We use this data to train the neural network because the neural network initially will produce fairly random output. But as you train a neural network, and that is the process that you go through, you collect the data for, for what you want the neural network to learn, and you collect the ideal output for the neural network, and you train it. Training goes through iterations, and it can take sometimes many, many iterations before the neural network is actually trained for your input and the ideal output, sometimes also called the expected output. This data is often arranged in CSV files to be sent to the neural network. A CSV file is comma separated value. You normally see these with Excel. And these are the usual inputs for the neural network. The input and ideal are often represented together. So the data that you would send into the neural network to be trained in this case would look like this. We're basically just constructing a very simple CSV file here that would be used to actually train the neural network. There you can see we have a training set that has basically four elements. It has two inputs that correspond to the two inputs coming into the neural network. It has one output that is going out from the neural network. This is the expected output. This is how you train the neural network. You, like I said, loop over it with many iterations with these CSV files. The CSV files can be very, very large as there are many, and you can have many, many inputs and many outputs. Usually you don't have a tremendous number of outputs, but you can have many inputs that represent the data that you want the neural network to give you some insight into. This is a basic introduction of how you would actually represent data coming into a neural network. We will see more about how the neural network actually processes this data in future videos. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll check out the later ones.